Welcome everybody to the Stop With The Sub Show. My name is Alex and I'm your host. And our guest today is the winner of The Apprentice in 2015, Joseph Valencia. Hi Joseph, how are you? Hi Alex, how are you doing? Very looking forward to your interview. Thanks, I'm doing great. All the better for speaking to you. So Joseph, you are very successful. I mean, winning The Apprentice in 2015 and you had your business in Gas that you sold for £2 million. So I would like to know if you made any mistakes on the way to becoming successful. And if so, what would you do differently now? I've made many, many, many mistakes over the years. And, you know, I think as a, as a younger businessman, younger entrepreneur, younger person, um, when you are making mistakes, sometimes they're hard to take, you know. And one thing I've learned and one thing you'll learn over the years is when you make these mistakes, um, actually they are your biggest lessons, okay. You find your biggest lessons in failure and you learn from what you've done wrong. So you don't know what you don't know. And a lot of these things um, that come across in business or in life, these are the first, first times you know, you've ever had to deal with them. So when you make the mistake, the key thing is, is that you take the lesson from it and you never make the mistake again, okay? I make mistakes once, hold my hands up, I did it wrong, but then I make sure um, I don't ever do it again. And in terms of um, what would I do differently, um, you know, I don't want to be cliche, but I don't think I would do anything differently, to be honest. I'm quite happy with where I currently am in my life. And I feel like, um, you know, you have to trust the process. You have to trust in the universe. You have to believe in a higher um, purpose. And that, for me, is destiny. You know, ever since I've been your age or even younger, you know, I've always believed that I've had a destiny, that I'm working towards something, that there's something special for me out there. So I said in, in the intro that you won the BBC's Apprentice in 2015. Mm -hmm. So what did you learn from it that you have shared with others over the last five years? Um, so I think the biggest takeaway, I mean, there's most, so many lessons, but the number one takeaway is when opportunity presents itself in life is grab it with both hands um, and take it, you know, the... I, I applied for The Apprentice on January the 9th, 2015, where I'd had a really bad day at the office. Um, you know, my business was great. It was doing well, but it wasn't growing as quickly as I wanted it to. So um, I got my phone out. Lord Jugger's page came up and it said, last call for The Apprentice. You know, and if I hadn't put my details in that application page then and there, um, my whole life right now would be completely different. And I don't know what it would have looked like, but the opportunity presents itself and you must take it. I think working with Lord Sugar, um, you know, was something that, you know, I could never have ever um, imagined, I never ever imagined I was going to do. So I kind of imagined it, that's why I did it. But the lessons and the takeaways I got from having a billionaire business partner at the age of 25 after only being in business for three years, were absolutely incredible. So for those of my viewers and the live streamers right now who are watching, if, you, if they didn't know that winning The Apprentice is when the billionaire, Lord Sugar, hires you to work with him. So what, in your opinion, was the reason that he made you, uh, he hired you over everyone else? Um, I think that he could see in me that there was um, no lying. You know, I was very, very honest. I was very hard working. I understood who I was and where I came from, you know, and I performed on every single task time and time again. So whenever you're in a um, situation like that, you know, you've got to always um, show your cards um, to a level because with Lord Sugar, he will see through you in a second if you aren't being honest with who you are. You know, and you get a lot of people on the show with very big egos um, and a lot of talkers and not a lot of doers. So, you know, when you watch it, you'll see people that will go in there and they argue in the boardroom and they try and pull other people down when actually I wasn't on that type of vibe. What I did was focus on what I did right, okay? So every time I went into the boardroom, I'd say, I wouldn't care about anybody else. It was all noise to me. They could argue till the cows come home and do what they wanted to do. But all I wanted to do was make sure I did my best on the task and then if he came to me and I had to justify my position, I would say, well, you know what, I did this, or I sold this much, or I set up that meeting. I'm not bothered what Claire, Dave, Richard, or anybody else did. Winners focus on winning, 
and losers focus on winners. So always focus on what you are doing. Keep and stay in your own lane and don't get distracted by um, anybody else out there in the marketplace. So on LinkedIn, I read your tagline and it says that whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. And mm. so I'm 13 and I have no business experience whatsoever. Yep, yes. So um, can you explain to me what you mean by, by that phrase? Excellent. Great question. So whatever the mind can conceive and believe the mind can achieve, um, that statement is taken or that phrase is taken from a guy called Napoleon Hill. OK, and he was a guy that was assigned a task to write a book. Um, and he was given introductions from a guy called Andrew Carnegie, which in 1900s was one of the richest men um, in the world and in America. He introduced him to Thomas Edison, um, presidents, um, Henry Ford, and he went around all of these billionaires and he wrote down what their characteristics were, um, what skill sets they'd have, how they acted, and so on. And he built this book called Think and Grow Rich. Have you heard of it? Uh, no, not really, actually. Okay, good. So what I want you to do is go and find Think and Grow Rich. I didn't read it until I was 23, 24. If you can read it at 13 and any of your viewers or listeners or anybody else, um, if you anybody watching on there, if you haven't listened to Think what listened or watched Think and Grow Rich, you read it, you must get it, okay? It's going to change your life. So whatever the mind can conceive and believe is basically saying that whatever um, you imagine in here, okay, can happen out here, right? It's about visioning your future. And most people only limit their successes by the only the limits they place on themselves. So if you think you can be a millionaire, you'll only ever get to being a millionaire. If you think you can be a billionaire, you can get to being a billionaire. If you, be, you, know, you believe you want to take over the world, if you want to be president of the United States, if you want to build a national business, win the apprentice, first and foremost, you must convince yourself in your own mind that it can come true. Yeah? So I can do this. I know it's going to happen. I can win that show. I can get into Forbes. I can have a best-selling book. You've got to vision it in your mind before it ever comes true. Yeah? So imagination is key. Get as creative as possible, you know, and just get excited about believing that you have an insane opportunity, okay, to be whoever you want to be. Uh, you got um, expelled from school yeah. and then you went to The Apprentice. So but in the, between those two, like, things, what, what were, you, were you planning on creating Infragas or were you, what else were you doing in your free time? Were you playing football? Were you playing video games? What were you doing? So when I went to secondary school and I was about your age, um, my mum and dad split up. Um, we came from quite a difficult upbringing. It was very volatile, pretty crazy, you know, and I was quite an angry teenager. So when I was going to school, I really didn't want to learn. I didn't want to listen. I didn't want to be told what to do by teachers. I thought I know all of the answers. And I'd, I, I used to bunk off and go and hang around down the park with my friends and, yeah, play football in the park when I should have been at school. But, um, you know, it was a very, very challenging time for me. And then when I hit 15, I got expelled from school. And that was because I was constantly disrupting class and so on. It was because I really didn't want to be there. You know, there was a whole host of things that I did that led up to that moment. But the reality is when I was expelled, okay, I realized that not necessarily that I'd made a mistake, but at that point, Everybody had given up on me. My mum thought I was a bad guy. My teachers hated me. You know, there was no one support. My dad had left. So there was no one supporting me anymore. So I was kind of on my own. And then I realized at the age of 15 that if I was going to change my life, okay, if I was going to be successful, that no one was going to come and do it for me, okay? The cavalry wasn't coming. Mum wasn't going to help. Dad wasn't going to help. School weren't going to help. Okay, it was down to me. So I decided to reach out to a local plumber. Okay, he was a guy that I knew. He was 25 at the time. He had a Mercedes, he had a BMW, sorry. He was doing quite well. And I said to him, listen, Darren, can I come and work for you for free for a year um, to gain experience? I don't want pain. And then when I'm 16, put me in college and start paying me. He accepted. I went and worked for him. We had a great relationship. And that's how I got into plumbing. 
And then I went to college at 16. I qualified at 18. Then I went to a special college for gas engineering. I qualified at that at 19. And then by the time I'd hit 22, I'd realized that I was done with working for somebody, okay? I wanted to go out um, and do my own thing. I didn't like what my companies were about. They weren't teaching me what I wanted to know. They were very small local businesses with no ambitions or dreams. So then I thought, right. And actually it was because of this, you know, and if you know my story, you'll know that I read this book at 22 and this is the, the exact one that inspired me that much to go online, take a 15,000 pound loan out, quit my job and then start a business, which was Infogas. What would you say was your most embarrassing childhood memory? One that your parents know about and one that your parents don't know about. <laughs> my most embarrassing um, childhood memory. Um, at my uncle's wedding, I was about five years of age. Um, I came down with a sickness bug. I ate this sausage roll um, while my uncle was doing the... Um, uh, the um, the groom speech and in front of everybody in the whole wedding I threw up all over my top and tail suit then I started running around because I was throwing up so bad and then because I was running um, I started not to be able to breathe and literally you know my uncle's quite a wealthy guy and we were all in um, um, uh, tuxedos and tails and top hat, top hat and tail suits. So um, you know, people just weren't happy while they're all eating their dinner. So that was pretty embarrassing. And if you were in my position and you could get any person in the world to interview because on oh, my podcast, um, who would it be and why? Um, Elon Musk. Why? And why? Because. I've seen a man, and I've followed him for a very, very long time, I've seen a guy go on to, you know, what I believe create three companies that are going to dominate um, the planet in the next um, 10 to 20 years. But SpaceX, got Tesla, um, he's got Solar City, um, he's got one more that I can't think, Neuralink, he's got the Boring Company. I mean, the things that he's planning to do, and he's doing right now, are just beyond belief. You know, there's a guy that's planning to colonize Mars. The ambition doesn't get much bigger than that. Okay, so if you could learn from somebody like that, goes back to the whatever the mind can conceive and believe the mind can achieve. If somebody can inspire you and show you that he can get to Mars, then um, you would be able to, right? Yeah, thank you, Joseph, uh, for your time. You've been great. Um, just, just thanks for your time. You've been very good.